Okay, welcome back folks. Uh, we're here at the channel today and today we're going to talk about floating neutrals or what are floating neutrals. So a floating neutral is talking in terms of a generator. Uh, basically there's two types of generators that we're going to talk about today. One is a floating, floating neutral generator and the other one is a neutral bonded to ground generator. Uh, the neutral bonded to ground generator seems to be the more popular type. Uh, and the floating neutral generator seems to be going uh, as a thing of the past. Now, when talking about a neutral floating generator, uh, basically it's talking about what the generator can put out. So this one is actually neutral bonded to ground. Uh, so we'll talk about that first. So as you can see here, it has a ground screw on it and it's a standby generator. And right in there, you can see neutral bonded to frame. So that's for these outlets that plug in here. So you can pull power off it during an outage. And basically when they're talking about neutral bonded to the frame, they're talking about the windings inside of the generator that creates the power. So between uh, the windings that come off of the internal part of the generator that it generates, you'll get 120 and 240. How you get 120 is there's a central tap neutral. This neutral is actually wired right to the frame of the generator. This is actually a ground, which makes things safer. Now with the neutral bonded to frame, when it's connected to your house via a transfer switch or an acceptable means to use without back feeding, um, basically the generator has its own neutral. So the neutral from the house needs to be isolated. So usually when we install a, a manual transfer switch, for example, if the generator has a neutral bonded to frame, then that means we need to do a three line break. So a three line break would be the two, two 40 volt lines and then the 120 volt line, which is the neutral. So we completely isolate that uh, from the house. So when the generator panel is running on utility, it has its own ground from the grounded system through your home. And then it completely switches over to the generator, which also has its own ground. Uh, to be used with the generator. Now, these generators can be bonded, um, which is just a fancy term for a ground. They can go right to a ground plate um, in addition, but the best thing to do is just use the generator like it is. Uh, the outlets that we supply that plug into the generator uh, are provided in a twist lock, so it does provide its own ground, and they seem to be the majority of uh, generators that are supplied today. So a floating neutral is a neutral inside of the generator that is not connected to ground. So basically it's like having an ungrounded outlet. Uh, the generator produces 120 and 240 volt um, and the 120 comes from the neutral trap connection between the 240 volt. However it has no ground so when we hook these style generators up to a home or a transfer switch, we need to isolate those neutrals in that system. And those neutrals need to be connected to the neutral bar. This, what this does is this ensures that when that transfer switch switches back and forth between utility and grid, uh, it still has a ground when you're running that generator. However, like I mentioned before, those generators are starting to become a thing of the past. So I think the purpose of this video today is just to clarify what a floating neutral is and that's why you'll see on some older generators you'll see floating neutral. That's what that means. But most newer generators uh, they all have neutral bonded to ground. It seems to be pretty much normal these days. Anyway, hope you liked this video. I know it was short. Don't forget to like and subscribe.